Today I'm bringing you lots of Christmas inspiration. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome! For the first project, we're going to start off with some of this gorgeous fabric that I got from Dollar Tree. It's got little red trucks with a black background and this is in the Crafter Square section. I hope you can find this. It's so pretty. Some Rust-Oleum flat paint. It's white. I'm going to use a summer sign from Dollar Tree. I love the tag signs. And then I have some thrifted and some Walmart and I'm not sure where the other red ribbon came from. Then I'm just going to have some random picks that I might be using. And we're always going to start off by removing tags and hangers. Give this a good coat of spray paint. Only one coat. And then once it's dry, we're going to flip it over on our fabric and trim this down to fit. You want to leave enough on the side so that you can fold it over and hot glue it down. Be sure you protect your fingers. You might not get glue on them this way, but you can certainly feel the heat from the glue. You can easily flip your corners in like this to make them nice and neat. Or do it any way that you feel like you want to do it. And we're going to go all the way around just like that. And when you get to the top, it's just an easy fold over and a little bit of glue, and it's sealed in there. That sign is completely covered by that fabric. I'm just going to trim off a little bit of this extra stuff here to make it kind of flat in the back and use a piece of this uh, paper and cut it down and put it on the back. Now I'm going to take this Believe sign or word. Um, there, It comes in a three pack. And I'm going to take it outside and spray paint it with that white one good coat is all it needed. And then decide what type of ribbons I want to use to make a really pretty bow to go on top. Oh yes, I remember now. This red ribbon was thrifted. I'm going to do about 18 inches, maybe a little bit over when you see me cutting here. Not exact. And I'm going to dovetail both sides of it. And I'll be doing the same process with each of the other ribbons, just cutting, I think I probably cut two of each. We'll see when I start counting. So this is what's called a funky bow. Very easy to make, and you're going to be happy with the results, I think. It's important that you choose a wired ribbon for these bows. You're going to go halfway down after you folded it over, kind of pinch it in the middle, and then you're going to squeeze it tightly in that joint between your thumb and your forefinger. Same way here, go about halfway down, pinch it toward the center tightly and then squeeze it into your hand. Hold it in your hand. Same thing with the next piece and I'm alternating pieces of ribbon, the different prints and designs so that it will um, give us more variety of color in our bow. You're going to continue this process with the smaller ribbon there that I think is a one inch piece of ribbon. You don't have to squeeze that in the center. It, you, it'll just go right into your hand easily. Okay, so you can see I've tried to keep the exact same colors away from each other. Just like that. And kind of disperse these colors and patterns evenly. Now when I first put this in my hand, I put it next to the other one. But you see, I don't like the look, so I'm just going to pull it out and move it to the other side. And so far, I like the way this looks. I love all the different patterns and textures so far. Now we have like a little bouquet. You can use a twist tie. You can use a piece of um, pipe cleaner. But I like to use my zip ties, especially for this particular bow. It's really thick where I'm holding it. It's very bulky right there. I did not take my hand off of that bow at all. I just used my other hand to wrap it around and then just pull that zip tie tight. Go ahead and cut the end off and then you can start fluffing that out. We're going to pull them away from the center and downward like petals on a flower. Away and down, away and down, just like that. 
opening up your loops. And then here I need to adjust just a little. So I pull down just a little bit. If you get your zip tie on really tight, you won't be able to move it at all. I was surprised I could move it because that thing is on there tight. Flip it over and then start pulling these apart. And you want to do the same thing with the tails that you did with the loops above. Separate the patterns, flip over those patterns to make sure they're all the pretty sides or down for now so that when you flip it over they will be up. Just like that. Now just pull those pieces back out like you had them. Very easy to do and that's why it's important that you use a wired ribbon. Uh, otherwise everything's just going to be kind of flat. It's going to lay flat. We want a nice poofy bow. Isn't she pretty? Okay. Now, I'm going to put that Believe word back on there. And I thought maybe I would use a little bit of ribbon to help it stand out. Looks good like that. But I like to layer, so I'm going to put a little bit of this green over the last piece of that ribbon. Just that scrap of ribbon I had left. I'm just going to trim the green down a little bit. Make it look a little bit neater. And then protect my fingers and put a good bit of glue under the ribbon. Now it's going to press up through that ribbon on the bottom and catch the ribbon on the top. So it's all glued nicely down. Now I'm going to use some of this E6000. When it gets clogged, just run a little piece of wire down there and you can get it to work again. I'm going to squeeze a little bit here and there on the back of this Believe sign so it won't pop off. You know how metal is with hot glue. And then very quickly and carefully add some hot glue kind of eyeball where it ought to be and then press it down. And now we're going to add a good bit of glue in the center of that bow on the bottom and flip it over on the top. Wherever you want to put it, mine's closer to the corner, to the left corner there. Now do you feel like you can do this bow? I think you can. We're going to add just a little bit of greenery. This is a thrifted pick that came from Dollar Tree and I well, no, Walmart. And I'll be using this pick a few times in this video. This greenery, rather. But you can get anything you want from the Dollar Tree. Anything you like. I like this one. It has a little bit of frosting on it. Just a little bit of frost. Tiny bit of glitter. And then I'm just going to tuck it in on that side. And then I like the placement of it here on the other side going downward. So I'm going to place it there. And this is what that tag sign will look like. You can use it as a leaner on your cabinet if you would like, or you can put a little hanger on the top. You can use whatever type hanger you want, but because this is a piece that is kind of out of balance, meaning that if you put it right in the center, it's going to lean to the side because of the heavy bow, you might want to use something like this so that you can slide it back and forth on the nail till you get it hung exactly as it should be. Follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Project number two. We're going to use some of these thrifted Merry Christmas ornaments. We're only going to use one, and I think it's a four pack. Just like that. Very glittery. I'm going to use another scrap of that same piece of fabric, and we're going to use one of these Dollar Tree ornament signs. I'm going to start by removing the the hangers and the tags like we always do and then I'm carefully going to pull this metal piece up. It's thin so you don't want to break it and then I'm just pulling off the hot glue off the back just to clean it up so it'll lay nice and flat when we put it back down. I'm going to trim off enough here and Mod Podge it down. This is a satin finish but you can use whatever kind you like. It's all going to stick it down just like this one will. Gonna get good coverage all over where the fabric's gonna touch. Hey, if you wanna show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. Check out the link in the description box below. Find your space and press it down. Thank you for the coffee, Denise. Okay, press it down from the center outward so you don't have any wrinkles or bubbles in there. And you could always iron your fabric if you would like to first, but um. I'm not like that. I just, I'm not going to do it. I know I can do it with my hands and save a little time. Okay, now I'm going to add my fabric, my Mod Podge on top of my fabric rather, all over, all the way to the sides. You can even see the edges through there. Thick coat and I'm going to put it to dry overnight. 
I'm gonna cut off the little hanger pieces here and remove the ribbon and just make it look more like it's not an ornament. You know, make it look like it is intended to be wording for a sign. You could probably cut this thin plastic off with a pair of scissors if you'd like. And I'm gonna use some Mod Podge sealer to seal in my glitter a little bit. Take it outside where it's ventilated and do that. Spray it down good one coat. Okay, now once this is dry and this is the next day, I'm gonna come in with my utility knife, flip this over, and trim with that blade right next to the sign. And it is going to cut, be careful, keep your hands out of the way. It's gonna cut a nice clean edge. Look at that, gorgeous. That Mod Podge, that overlap made a nice edge like a piece of paper would be. So it's very easy to cut like you would cut paper. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And I'm gonna sand my edges just a tad and I'm just using a, a foam block, sanding block for that. Down and away, down and away until it is finished. Now, I've chosen some of this thrifted ribbon and it's actually some type of a trim, I think, but it's sort of velvety and shiny. We're gonna use it to trim out the word in just a moment. Now we're gonna use a little bit more of this E6000 on this metal piece and a little hot glue. Quickly moving around here, flipping it over, and then we're going to use some clamps to hold it down. These little clamps have been a lifesaver to me. They came from Crafter Square in the Dollar Tree. Add on your hot glue here, and that's all you really need for this plastic piece. Just some hot glue. And then try to get it centered you will notice in the end product that mine is not exactly centered, but you know, it's okay. I don't mind. Dollar Tree can't even get it exactly centered, so I'm not going to be too harsh on myself. Now, I thought it would be cute to just have my word overhanging the little ribbon trim a little bit, so I did it like that and just kind of wiggled it under there, and I'm going to use some hot glue on the back side to glue it down. I'm going to put it under there, and then try to get it close to the same measurement on the other side and then glue it down on the back side as well. Easy to do. Now we'll take off my little clamps once it is dry and this is what it looks like. What do you think? Not bad, huh? All right, on to project number three. We're going to use some of this Rust-Oleum paint. We're going to use another pick my E6000 again, a little hot glue, this cute little tray that I got from Dollar Tree with the truck on it, and then I have some ribbon from the thrift store, this plaid, it's not the same as the check that's on the truck, but that doesn't matter, it's okay. This is some Dollar Tree ribbon, and then some more Dollar Tree ribbon. Cute. I used this in another project for fall and I'm going to reuse it. I'm gonna cut off this hanger because we will not use it in this and then take this wheel out and spray paint it. The front one time and the back one time. While that is drying, we're gonna go ahead and fix our little, a way, we need a way to attach this to the wreath. So we're gonna do it with these pipe cleaners. I'm using a little bit of E6000 along with some hot glue because, like we said before, hot glue is going to pop off of metal a lot of times. So just be sure that you're keeping that in mind when you do your projects because it's very frustrating to get done and then have things falling apart. So I'm going to put a clamp on here to hold it because I want to be sure that my E6000 is sticking down like it should. And Dollar Tree has a, um, a comparable adhesive that you can use if you would rather use that if that's what you have you can use that and then I'm going to clamp it down until it is dry I gave that a day to dry and my wheel is now dry and I'm going to just lay this down and figure out kind of where I want it to be and flip it over and just wrap around those spokes for the wheel and I'll tell you this and you're going to notice this later when I'm putting the greenery on this thing will break easily. Now I'm surprised I didn't break it with the first one that I did, but this time I actually do break it and I fix it. So 
be sure you're paying attention because you want to be sure I don't want anybody to give up on their project just because they have a bump in the road you can fix little errors like that so I know that I want these to wrap around like this and they're going to be connected with this piece of um, this floor wire and you'll see here see how it's broken how that little spoke is apart from there I just slid it down that piece of greenery started to wrap and then when I wrap the greenery down and get it somewhat secure I'm gonna wrap around right there to catch that spoke and then wrap it back and forth and back and forth to hold that spoke right there in place and then you can secure it with a little bit of hot glue and it won't come apart see that was easy to fix wasn't it now I'm gonna overlap these and with any additional wire I have I'll just use that and I'll add more wire when needed and then just continue to wrap just like this now the greenery that I'm using is good greenery it's from Walmart but it is a good it's a very good quality the feel of it it just feels like it's good quality it does have some gaps where I have wrapped it and it's kind of flattened out where I've wrapped it so that's not a problem either we're just gonna pull another one of those picks apart and then overlap those pieces just like that and these are the pieces that just pop the plastic pieces they pop right off the wire you just pull them sometimes when you're arranging they fall off it's that easy to do so you're just going to use those and add those along the way in any spots that look bare or that need a little more fullness and then one more piece I thought maybe one above the truck would look nice and it is going in the opposite direction and I did intend for it to go that way um, if that bothers you you can certainly do yours you know in another direction or cover the entire wreath if you like now just use that stem to wrap around the wheel and then I'm using my wires to wrap that around there as well then just a little bit more on the top and holds it in place and then like I said go ahead and go back and put more on where you feel like you need to put more on alright so so far so good now we want to add a bow and I'll tell you this bow is very easy to make you're just gonna fold it over on itself several times and I end up with this pattern of ribbon I have three loops on one side and two loops on the other side I just miscounted it happens sometimes but you know you go with it right we work with it then I'm gonna take this Dollar Tree ribbon and do the same thing just fold it over and over and over until I have at least two loops on one side and two loops on the other side or folds depends on how you look at it I'm gonna cut a piece of this ribbon right here and it's just gonna be used to attach it together to the frame alright this is gonna look like a little bow tie see there squeeze it up pinch it up and then decide what well, if you want the pattern of the solid color on top I'm gonna to put my pattern on top like that and then I'll be using a zip tie to close it off you can use whatever you would like to do this to you know hold your bow together whatever you like and then once I have that bow secured I'm just folding it in half and sliding that down before I tighten it all the way make sure it's even in the middle I can start fluffing this out and of course once I start fluffing it out that's when I realize hey I have extra loops that I didn't think I had so happy mistakes yes and I'm just gonna pull them all apart you know how to fluff a bow that's what we're gonna do we're gonna fluff them all out uh, I think I ended up with five loops on the bottom too hmm. okay so I'm just gonna use this to wrap around the center and then secure it to the frame right in that open spot you flip it over and tie it in a few knots so easy to do and now we're going to work on the tails this is about 18 inches here I'm just going to fold this over and dovetail it and then I'm going to do the same thing with the red plaid then I'm going to stack the red plaid on top pinch it together place it down in the center of that piece of ribbon that tied it to the frame and I'm just gonna tie that in a few knots that's what's gonna be our tails 
And because we use wired ribbon, it's going to stand up and stand out and look very pretty for us. So I'm going to pull these tails through the frame. You can curl these with your fingers. You can tuck them around and under floral. I've, I've tucked that plaid one there you see behind the truck. I just pressed it down behind there. And then this red, I don't know, is this metallic? A metallic ribbon. I'm looking to see the right side of it. And there we go. I just flipped it over. Very easy. And then I'm just going to feed it through the wire here. And do the same thing on a different spoke with that plaid. Isn't that cute? I like the way that looks. But you can do yours any way you like. Now I'm going to use a little mini ornament from, I think it originally came from Walmart, one of my viewers told me. And put that there. It's going to be on our door. Then I'm going to trim down this ribbon. And we're going to make a little bitty bow. I've seen people make these bows before, like on a fork. And they're really cute, like a real tiny bow. But I'm just going to do mine like the breast cancer awareness um, tie. I'm going to do it like that. And then I'm going to tie that extra piece that we cut off right around the center. Just like that. A couple of knots, make sure it doesn't slip out. Then I'm going to flatten it with my fingers a little bit and decide how short I want the tails to be. Trim them down a bit. Now we're going to glue down that little mini ornament. I'm just wiping that glitter off of there. Press it down and then you can certainly use your E6000 there too. And then put my little bow right over the hole. And I decided that I still wanted to use a little bit of this ribbon. So I'm going to make, you can make a ribbon like that, a bow like that, or you can flip it around like I did the other ones. Flip it around a few times, and we're going to have four loops when this bow is done. Easy. We're going to use a piece of jute. We're going to fold it in half, find our center, tie it off, and then we can tie it on top of the other bow. Really, really really easy to do. We didn't even have to notch these bows. Alright, so again, pull those loops out. You can trim the tails that are on the inside because we don't have intentional tails in here, so you can cut those off, make them a little shorter, just like I'm doing, so that they don't get in the way. And we can plop that little, looks like a four-leaf clover, right in the middle, wrap it around, and just tie that jute where it is at. Now that thing should be very secure in there. But like I said, feel free to use a little bit of hot glue if you need to, to make sure that it doesn't move around. Mine is staying there fine. And I think that that extra ribbon really did the trick. It really brightened up that top part, and I like it a lot. So now we need a hanger. We're going to flip it over and use another little piece of pipe cleaner. I ran out of white, so that's why I'm using the brown. And just wrap it, twist it around there, and then move over just a little bit on the other side of that spoke and go ahead and wrap it again. And now you have a little hanger and it is hidden behind the greenery. Go ahead and trim off any extra wire that you have back there just to keep it from scratching up your wall or your door, wherever you're going to put it. And there you go. Project number one is a yard flag wall hanger. We're going to use some of these um, pit berries from Dollar Tree. Use any ribbons you like. These came from the thrift store and some type of a kit, I think. And they're just little scraps of ribbon. These are two pieces that I got off of another project. It's just going to be the tops and bottoms. And then I thrifted this beautiful cardinal rustic looking yard flag. We're going to use some foam board. You can get yours at the Dollar Tree. Mine was thrifted. And we're going to put it on top of something. You can either use your cutting mat or you can just measure it with a ruler, whichever way you want. And figure out what size you have because we want that foam board to be the backing for this project to make it sturdy. 
So measure that out, and that's what I'm doing here, just showing you that I'm measuring it out. And I'm going to be cutting it on top of my mat. I'm just using my rotary cutter, but you can use whatever you have to do this. I just find this is easier, and it makes a cleaner line than using scissors. Sometimes you have to flip it over on the other side and then cut the other side as well. Because the paper, there's paper on the back and the front. And, it'll, and there's foam in between, sandwich in between, and sometimes it'll be kind of messy. But you can clean your edges up also. I'm going to use my little glue stick here. And it's back to school time, so you can get a lot of good buys. Right now, Dollar Tree has the Jot. I think it's eight sticks in a pack, so that's a really good deal for your all of your crafting needs. And now I'm going to put down my flag right on top of that and press it down with my hands to get any wrinkles out and then I'm going to use my wallpaper smoother and just smooth that right out all the way to the edges because we don't want anything to peel off and you can go around the edges and reinforce that with some hot glue or any type of glue you have now you can see that there's a space that is still bare on the top and the bottom and that's because I'm going to use something to trim this out I'm just using regular strength hot glue here. This is going to be in the house. If you're going to put anything like this outside, which I really wouldn't recommend for this type of a project, but if you're going to put it outside, maybe on a covered porch, you're probably going to want to use something like uh, Gorilla Glue, something that's stronger and it can deal with um, weather changes without falling apart. Okay, so now I'm just going to add this top and bottom and really all you need to do you can use paint sticks you can use any type of scraps that you have just make sure that you know for this particular look that it's a longer on the sides than it is um, than the picture is and I'm just going to use my clamps and clamp this down because sometimes the foam boards will bow a little bit and I want to be sure that the glue is sticking down to my trim pieces same thing here and leaving that little space on the back ensures that we have plenty of that picture showing from the flag. I don't want to cover up anything that I don't have to. Very easy to go back and just fix any little areas that need a little extra love. And now we're going to start on embellishing this. And these pieces of ribbon are about 10 inches long. And all I'm doing is folding them over. So I'm making a loop on the top and squeezing those and holding those in the middle. I'm going to do that with lots of my ribbon. I've just kind of picked through and decided, you know, which ones look like they coordinate nicely and which ones are going to give me that rustic look that I enjoy in my house. And as you know, I have been adding more cottage type feel in my house. So I'm going to try to do that at Christmas time also. So be sure that you subscribe so when we do have Christmas content coming out, you won't miss anything. Now, if you don't feel comfortable holding this in your hand, use a clamp and put it together. And you see there's really no pattern um, for this. I'm going to take a zip tie. You can use a zip tie, floor wire, a pipe cleaner, a, a twist tie from a bread bag if that's all you have. And just tighten this up really tightly in the middle. And I'm going to cut off any excess and fluff out the bow. If you are going to go and buy some zip ties to use in crafting, it's, you really might consider getting ones that the smallest one that you could possibly use to keep your project secure because right there where you see that little white square, that's going to cause some bulk and it is really difficult because you can't trim it down. It's really difficult to work around that. You have to glue it and then you're going to have like a little 
almost like a little gap. It's not a big deal for everything, but if that kind of stuff bothers you, then you might consider getting smaller zip ties, and you can get a variety of zip ties at the Dollar Tree. Very affordable, and lots and lots and lots of them. I think the smallest ones I've seen are the black ones, but um, correct me if I'm wrong if there's something else that you've seen. Okay, this type of bow is what Ramon at Home refers to as a funky bow. And you pretty much are going to have all your tails poking out in every which way. And you're going to have all of your little loops poking out in every which way. And makes a cute bow. And these are really pretty too if you use them on a larger scale on bigger projects. So we're just going to take that and decide where we want it to be. And then hot glue it in place. When I'm doing my crafting, I generally prefer when I'm adding bows to do it in the left corner. I don't know why. It just always feels right to me to put it over there. And I kind of go by how I feel about a project, you know, what feels right to me. So I do recommend that you do the same. Now I'm just going to take another piece of that. I'm going to make a really simple little bow. Just making a little loop, squishing it down in the middle, and then tying it off. Very, very simple. I'm doing a lot more of these little simple bows lately because I feel like they look better with um, the type of decor that's in my home. You do what, what you like. And I'm just going to add that little kitty right in the middle of that funky bow for a little extra interest. Now we're going to take some of this Pitberry Vine. I'll get it out in a minute. And you've seen me do this before in projects. We're just going to clip it off at whatever length that you like. Just be sure that you get, you know, several of those berries on the vine. And if you want to make a little twist out of this, a little spiral, you just wrap it around a pencil or whatever you have. And just slide it off the end and there you go. And then you can just add a little hot glue. And put those little pieces wherever you like. I feel like this was appropriate for this picture because of the branches in the background and because it's very snowy so it looked like little snow covered branches to me what do you think I think that really made a difference up there so now I'm just going to take some jute that I have and since conveniently enough there are little hangers on this I'm just gonna tie it off and get it to the length that I want it so simple. If you do not have hangers on your little scraps, all you have to do is hot glue it to the back or tie it on whichever way that you like to do it. You could use a staple gun if you've got a good quality thick piece of material. There you have it. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to use some of this home decor stain. This is like a wood tint and it's in gray. It's from Folk Art. little chippy brush here. This I got from the thrift store. It is a paper banner. And it happens to fit this sign that I got from Dollar Tree. Perfect. You'll still be able to see the hole, but I can fix that a little bit. So here is this one. They make them in, um, I think they have some Christmas ones too, but I like the one that is just kind of, doesn't have any paint on it. We're going to fix it though. So I had some little creases. I'm just fixing my little banner there. I'm going to cut the tag and hanger off of this sign. Easily enough done. And then we're going to work on staining this wood. This is just a beautiful piece. I love, I love, love, love this piece of wood. You can see all the grain in it. It's just, it's really pretty. And to think that you get that for a dollar, it's pretty amazing. All right, so I've shaken up that stain and um, or that tint, and I'm just going to start brushing this on this wood. It does not have a foul smell. It is very easy to clean up. I just use a paper towel to wipe off my cutting mat. I've been using this to paint on, and it works pretty good. It's thick. Won't let anything get on my table underneath. And you just try to go with the grain of the wood. It just happens to look better that way, and it's very pretty. I'm going to take a dry paper towel and just start kind of wiping that off. Again, 
kind of with the grain. You can see some of it comes off, some of it stays on the wood. It's very subtle, but it is a gray color and it's really pretty. I'll show you the difference. So here's, there you go. You can see the natural side and then after it's dried, we're gonna flip this over and I'm just gonna use some of this masking tape to cover up the hole in the back. I wasn't entirely sure how to fill this hole in in the first place because it would take a lot of lightweight spackle to fill in that. So I have another way that I'm gonna disguise it. No problem. See there, that fits almost entirely to the end and that's gonna work for me. I'm just kinda of looking at it to see how centered I can actually make it. And just kinda of look by eye first and then grab my ruler and look at a couple of points here and pull it down where it needs to be. And then I'm just using my clamp so that it doesn't slide around when I start gluing it. And it's just, you know, kind of a guide for me so it doesn't move. I'm just gonna add dots and lines underneath there. I was trying to be really delicate at first because I was afraid it might show through this paper, but it's pretty thick. It's almost like a fabric. It's, you know, thicker than cardstock. And then I'm just going to clamp it just to make sure I don't pull anything loose when I go to the other side to glue it down. Same thing here. So how's everybody feeling today? Are we crafting? Are we in the Christmas spirit yet? I know I am. Alright, so I've chosen these stars. I was going to use wreaths in the beginning, little tiny wreaths, but I think these stars look great. I got them from the thrift store. They're just wooden and they are, it looks like somebody had brushed them with some gold paint. It's a really pretty muted gold. I like it. I did make a mess here. So I'm just going to go back over with some ribbon and kind of trim this out. And this came from Dollar Tree, this ribbon. It is a very neutral color and it has just a little bit of a gold trim. And I don't mind that. I'm not, you know, I'm not huge into metallics, but I think at Christmas time, it's time to, to bring out your bright, shiny everything, right? bright shiny everything or your shiny brights whatever you have and it just I don't know it just brings a little joy to me you know the little sparkle the way the light catches it it's those little things you know be sure that you cut your angles so that they kind of match the angle on the end of your sign there it's like a dovetail so just be sure that you get your slant right make it nice and and finished and pretty and then you can start placing down the stars and you see that covers up that hole perfectly. I didn't even need to do all that work with the tape on the back, but that's okay. You live, you learn. Now I'm just trying to make sure that I get the angles right because it would drive me nuts if they were not matchy when I got done. But you see there, I got it right. All right, so then now we have holes in the end where the hangers were. I'm just taking a little bit of brown paint that looked a little grayish brown to me. It turns out it really doesn't match that well, but it does cover up the white from the spackle that I put in there. You can leave this alone if you want. You could cover it up with something else, but you're gonna see shortly that I'm gonna fix it completely. All right, now, we're gonna take a piece of this jute. This is thick jute. I got it from the thrift store, but you can certainly get it from Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna put two knots layered right on top of one another. And you can see how I slide the knots down so that they aren't separated. Cut it off close to the knot, with one end being a little bit long. And you're gonna do the same thing again, so that you have two of these. Cut it off right next to the knot without cutting through it. And then I'm gonna make sure that my little pieces here are the same size. And we're going to glue this string on the back. And the reason I left it kind of long in the beginning because I wanted to see how much I wanted that string to poke out, you know, once it is hung up. I don't want it to be very long. I want it to fit like above a door. So this would be a good length, just like that. Just a little hot glue and a little masking tape. Now I'm gonna take those little knotted sections there and I'm gonna glue those down with the knot down and the rope hanging out. This gives the illusion that that rope is going through your sign and I didn't have to get out the drill to drill another hole to actually hang it through there. But you can certainly do that. You know, it's an option. But there you go. And I think it turned out pretty good. Follow me on my social media, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. The next one is a Rustic Noel wreath. So this is a grapevine wreath that I have used for several crafts, and I'm gonna use it again. I've probably had this thing for 20 years. It is about 15 inches. You can use whatever you like. 
And then I have some thrifted picks that are absolutely gorgeous. It looks like they came from Michaels about 100 years ago. There you go. But they're really pretty and they're not frosted and I wanted to do something that wasn't frosted in this wreath. I've got some Southern Living ribbon that was thrifted. The little snowflake ribbon on the side was thrifted and then the other two came from Dollar Tree. The bigger ones are wired, just so you know. Now these particular picks happen to kind of give you the option of having them flat on the back, which I love because I don't have to do so much arranging. I start off by poking the stem down into here, but you can see that this is a struggle. I actually cut my pinky finger doing this. I'm telling you, I have the thinnest skin ever. I think it goes along with being a redhead with freckles. We just don't have a lot of collagen. Now I'm going to use a piece of this wire and I'm going to go into like the center without pressing anything down and then wrap it around the back. It's so funny. I watch other crafters. I, I, I'm not as good about it as I used to be, but I was watching Trish from Crafting Cousins, and she did a wreath that just reminded me so much of this. I just, you know, creative minds think alike, I believe. You should check her out, her and Kay out at Crafting Cousins. All right, so I'm going to continue around here, and I'm just sort of doing a semicircle, and I'm layering them with the stems downward, and then just wiring them down to that frame where they need to be wired. Next, we're going to work on this bow. Guys, this is a gorgeous bow. If you are into bows, you are going to love this one. So we're going to use 10 inch loops. And I think I mentioned this is wired ribbon. So we're going to one, two, three. And then I'm just counting here to see how many I got. So you're going to loop it over on itself three or four times. And then you can trim it off and go on to your next ribbon. This is some thick stuff. I love this ribbon. Then we're going to go to the next one. And it's going to be about 10 inches. I think I managed to get it a little bit smaller when I was folding, but that's okay. Going to continue to go, folding, folding over on itself. And then cut it off. It doesn't have to be the same amount of loops as the other one, by the way. Just whatever you want to do. So now this one, and this is thrifted also, and I got this from, um, I think this comes from maybe Michael's or Hobby Lobby in the wedding section. I believe I've seen it when I've been in there shopping before. Really pretty. It's got little pearl beads on the side. Just really pretty. So now I'm going to bend this in half, this stack, and I'm going to take my scissors, try to line my edges up, and just cut into it. You want to cut through that edge and barely into the burlap or the fabric, whichever ribbon you're using. I'm folding again to find my center point. Cut just through the wire, just through the wire, because this isn't burlap, it's thinner. And then this one, because it is so thick, I'm using my pliers here, my little cutters, to just cut into the wire and a little bit into the burlap. So now we are going to start stacking this bow. Make sure that your loops are on top and that that free edge, that straight edge is on the bottom. Those are going to be the tails, those straight parts. So we're going to take a, <laughs> I doubted if I was going to be able to get this entire bunch into this zip tie, but it worked. So um, yeah, you're going to take a zip tie for this one. It's going to take a lot of tugging on this bow to get it all fluffed out. The struggle is real, but I'm going to tell you right now, it is so worth it. So worth it. All the work, and I like it. There's something about touching all that fabric, pulling all of those pieces apart, and seeing what it comes up to look like. Because when you first do it, it just looks like, you know, panels of fabric or panels of ribbon. It's flat, and you start questioning things, and then as you fluff from the bottom upward, that's how I do it, you just start to see this beautiful form start to take shape. Look at that, already it's starting to look so much better. Now you can cut off those little tails or you can dovetail them, whichever way you wanna do it. Be sure that the pretty side is up and generally you can flip those over if it's a good quality um, fabric. This particular ribbon wasn't very good quality so I didn't even bother with it, I just cut those off. And then going on to the burlap and the other ribbon, I thought those would look nice dovetailed. 
give it a little more dimension and I think that looks pretty. And we're going to continue along dovetailing. You know how to do that. And this kind of keeps the frays out of your bows too, so you don't have anything frayed out. You want it to look high end, right? And if you gave something like this as a gift, nobody would ever know it was handmade. It's just so pretty. Look at the colors. What do you think about the burlap, the white, and the silver? Is that not stunning? Oh, I love that. I love it so much. Okay, so now we need tails for the ribbon. So I'm just going to stretch out my ribbon, and I'm going to go 18 inches. That's how long this ruler is. I'm going to cut it off, and I'm going to do 18 inches also of this one. And then the burlap ribbon with the pearls, it's probably 20 inches long, and I left it long. That's all I had left of that ribbon. So I'm going to finish it off. Okay, so they're dovetailed, and I'm stacking them. And you can just decide which way that you want to stack it. You know, which one you want in the back, which one you want in the front, how you want it to lay down. Um, if you have different patterns, you know, decide how you want to do your patterns. For me, the idea is to give it some variety and kind of separate it, but to be sure that all of them get a little bit of attention. So I wanted to let that snowflake piece be on top. Taking another zip tie, we're going to go around the center, cinch it really well and trim it off. And then we're going to find our placement on this beautiful wreath. So, you can go down low and fill the whole thing in, or you can leave a little space on the side, which is what I ended up doing, to put another piece there. So I'm just wrapping some wire around and tying it and twisting it, and then I'm going to thread some wire through this bow on the bottom, and then put it on as close as I can to the greenery without overlapping it. Twist it around in the back and then press it into your wreath so you don't have any wires hanging out. And again with the fluffing. Yes, yes, you must always do this. Always, always. And for the love of Pete, if you ever take a wreath out of a box, please fluff it before you hang it on your wall. It's going to make so much difference. I promise you, you'll be so much happier with it. So I'm just going to take a really pretty Christmas card. I got it at the thrift store. You can get beautiful cards at Dollar Tree or anywhere else you want to go. I just weakened that seam with my fingernails, flipping it back and forth, and then put my ruler on it and pulled it off nicely. Now I'm just using my finger to roll the little edge under. This came from Kirkland's, but I thrifted it. And I'm going to use some of this medium gray folk art paint, and I'm going to start painting over this sign. Now if you use a flat brush like I'm using, you can see how I'm doing it to get close to the edge where you don't have to tape it off. Isn't that great? Just kind of push it upward, push it upward, and then pull it back. Perfect. You can do your corners that way. Easy, easy. And you're saving yourself some time without having to use all that tape. So we're going to, it's not, you can still see a little bit through it, but it'll be covered by the card. So once it's dry, you're going to take that card. And I love that it matches perfectly to the color in this card. I'm just going to add some hot glue. You can put this on any way you like. But using hot glue, I could always peel this card off and use the frame for another project. Okay, so you could use it just like that on your coffee bar or anywhere else. But I'm going to add a wire because we're going to add this to the wreath. Easiest project ever, right? Easiest one ever. Okay, so wrapping some wire around it. We're going to set it down on the wreath. Right where the tails of the bow and the greenery meet. It's going to cover up that stem and give it a little more interest. Twist that tie around it, and there you have it. I'm going to use, it's trying to fold over just a little bit, you know, hang over, so I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue to help secure it. A couple of dots on the frame uh, and on the wreath. Now we're going to move on to our next project. On this one, we'll be using the transfer paper for dark fabric. That's the package that we're using. And I've printed out, have yourself a merry little Christmas. And this is what that paper looks like. There's a grid on the back. You're gonna print on the front. I'm gonna use some greenery here. And that's just a scrap of fabric that I've used in other projects. So everything's gonna be nicely coordinated. And then this is an embroidery uh, hoop that I have. And this is my Vivo Home heat press. This is a new item that um, I've recently 
got and I'm trying out and I'll be doing a separate video on that for you. So I'm going to trace this out so that I can fit it on the inside of that embroidery hoop and on top of my fabric and I'm just going to trim it down so that it looks good um, where I need it. Now you're going to have a white background with this. Just know that there will be a white background on this one. Peel that backing off. Easy. It came off very easily. It's not sticky on the back so you have a little time to work with it and move it. I'm trying to find pretty much my center here. And I'm counting my stripes. That makes it very convenient and easy. Just going to press it down. I'm going to cover it with my grease-free paper that also comes in your package. Then use my heat press to press it down for the right amount of time. And then it is nicely sealed onto my paper. I do have a little mess here. Maybe I held it down for too long. I'm new to the heat press. We'll have to see. But I'm okay with it. Like I said, rustic, I'm not worried about it. Okay, so now I'm just trying to find my placement on here so that it is centered. And I'm going to show you when you don't have it centered, because you're going to watch me press it down. You can see here clearly that is not centered. But because we don't have the screws tightened down all the way, you can pull your fabric while it is in that hoop. And then when you get it where you want it to be, then you can just tighten down the screw and it will be there for a long time. Okay, so it looks pretty much centered to me. Good enough. We could tighten that screw and then we're going to flip it over and cut. You can see me cutting very close to the frame here and holding that fabric up. Now you can see the scissors are sideways. This makes it easier to get a, a cleaner cut. You don't have all that extra hanging off of there and you can't see it once you've got your item placed where you want it. I'm just going to go all the way around and be careful that you don't cut into your hoop and get a bunch of splinters because I have done that before with some very sharp scissors. Trimmy, trim, trim, all the way around. Okay, now um, you don't have to glue your frame together if you want to use this for something else. Then you know, don't glue it together. But you could certainly glue it if you want it to be permanent. Now here we go with those picks again. We're going to try to decide how you want to place your greenery. I've got to have greenery on everything. It looks like, doesn't it? So you can put it on the bottom of your hoop. You can put it on the top. You can use a round hoop instead if you cannot find an oval. I, the oval ones are harder for me to find at the thrift stores, but you know, whatever you have, whatever you like, we're just going to work with it. Since I have the screw on the side, I want to do something to kind of hide that. And I think this is a good place to put a swag. It gives it a different look and I like it. We're going to take some floral wire and I'm going to cut that off at a pretty good length here so that I can use it to layer these pieces together. You can certainly use zip ties. They're a little more bulky though, but um, totally up to you, whatever you have. And you could also, you know, if you wanted to tie this together with some jute, you could. If you had something that you could just hot glue together, you could. But I find that using wire really holds things together nicely. Okay, so here we just stacked them up. Now I'm going to add this pick that's got some berries on it. And it's actually a fall pick, I believe. But I think it looks great with this. What do you think? You think those look okay? I think they look pretty good. Now I'm going to go around the middle once I get them exactly where they want to, where they need to be, where they want to be. Yes, they want to live there. Okay, now I'm going to twist them. I'm going to twist them tight, turn them around, and then this is where we'll place them. Now I'm going to take my zip tie and put it through the ring back there where the screw is and across the center of this greenery. Now I left a little gap in the greenery here because we're going to make a bow. And I think you'll like this bow. Clip it off. Okay. Now you can do a little fluffing here to put this where you want. Also makes it convenient when you use wire because you can pull these things back and forth. And a good quality greenery, even if it's thrifted, especially if it's thrifted, will do that for you. Okay, so here's some more Dollar Tree ribbon. And I'm going to use about eight inches here just measuring. I have a, a little tape down there, a little measuring tape on my table. And I'm going to make some loops. This is easy. You're just going to fold it over on itself several times. Just fold and fold and fold until we get four loops, four layers on each side. So there's four 
and there's four. And then I'm gonna turn it around this way and count. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three. So now there's the fourth one. We're gonna cut that off. You don't need to leave a tail in it. I'm gonna fold it in half to find my center and grab my wire cutters and just cut the wire on the edges. Now you can use scissors for this if you'd like. I'm just using these because it can be done. I'm gonna use a piece of jute, put it right into those notches. We're gonna slip it into the notches and then just tie this. I'm gonna tie it tightly, put a few knots in it so that it stays in place. Now for the fun part, we get to flip the bow. And then we're gonna flip these pieces out. We're gonna pull them away from each other, out and give them just a little twist. Olivia from Olivia's Romantic Home calls this the Olivia bow, but I have seen this bow done by several different crafters, so is there really a name? Probably not. Maybe we should call it the notch bow. Sounds pretty good. You cut notches, right? Let's call it the notch bow. Okay, so we're gonna use that piece of jute that is still on there because we didn't cut it off. And we're just gonna tie it around where we've already got everything zip tied down. You can zip tie it if you want. Now I've added some tails, but my camera cut out. I've just folded a long piece in half and then put a little hot glue under the bow. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of hot glue to just put the bow to hold it a little more stably in place. And then to keep that tail off of the S part of Christmas, I'm just going to put a dot of glue right there. Be careful not to burn yourself. Now use whatever you want to use to hang this up. Keep in mind that it's going to be heavier on the side with the greenery than on the other side. So if you don't want it to hang crooked, you need to be sure that you put a hanger on that can be adjusted or that you know you can pull around from side to side. So here that one is. Pretty? I love it. I think it Today we'll make a glowing snowflake swag. Keep watching. We're going to start off with some deco mesh. We're going to be using a little brush and some white chalk paint. I have a little sign here that matches the colors I'll be using. I have a snowflake. You can pretty much get these anywhere this time of year. And I have some little wood ornaments that we're going to be painting. I think one came from a craft store and the other one came from Dollar Tree and then two Dollar Tree white Christmas trees. I'm repurposing those from a swag last year. Some zip ties and some frosted looking picks. They actually look like they have bits of snow on them or ice. Okay, so you can do your swag either way, but for this purpose, I'm going to use like a I think you would call it a teardrop shape. So we're just gonna kind of overlap these to make it a little bit longer, a little bit thicker, but we're gonna leave one, the one is gonna be a couple inches taller than the other one. So you're just gonna put one several inches down lower and then connect them with the tie right around that inner piece. And then fluff these pieces out and I'm gonna get these out of the way so I can put one more tie in there. If you don't, it's gonna move around because you can see, see there when I pull them to fluff them out, they just keep trying to move away from each other. So fluff all the pieces out to the sides. We're gonna be using these for our deco mesh to hold them in place. All right, so I think this is a good spot for another tie close to the bottom, but in a place that of course will be hidden when we put every everything that we have on top of it. And then I'll just use my cutters here and just trim off those extra pieces in, throw those in the trash. I know one thing for sure when you're working with this type of stuff it tends to grab on everything these and deco mesh and these little branches um, they just catch on to everything like velcro and they go all over the place you move one piece and everything's moving so you just want to make sure that these are all pulled out straight pine branches are straight so let's pull these all out straight and this will also help us when we're getting ready to place down our deco mesh bundles we can see exactly where we need to put them and then the tip ends a little bit longer. We're gonna be putting something down there later. 
If you would like to show me some love, it's not required, but always appreciated. You can find the link to buy me a coffee in the description box below. Okay, so I went and added some of this white mesh, and it has like a silver running through it. We're going to take our gray mesh first, and this is shorter, a shorter mesh than the other. I think this is 8 inches, and the white one is 10 inches, I believe. But you just need two different sizes to get this effect. So I'm going to be using, to start the bundle, two gray and then two white. And I'm just cutting that frayed edge off to give me a nice clean edge. And then go up to the 10 and then just cut that off. And then this is what the bundles will look like when they're done. Pretty much. Be sure you got some clips that you can hold your little bundles together. And I'll show you how we're going to put those together. You're going to take the gray, roll it over about three times, clamp it off, go to the other side, roll it over a couple of times, and then walk the center in. These are called cruffles. The rolled edges are going to be under, just the way I like to do it. I know some people put the rolled part on top. You can do it whichever way you like best. Then we're going to go next to the white piece, same process here, roll it under. That catches all those loose ends so you don't have any frayed bits sticking out of your pretty little bundle. And we're just going to scoot them up close side by side and clamp them together. There will be a gray, a white, and then another gray. Same process. Folding over, walking them together. Okay, and you know here, you can just see I easily flip it over and add it to the bundle. And this keeps everything with the rolled edges on the underside. And that's how I like mine. And they look like this. Really cute. Follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Alright, so we're going to start cutting down the picks. I'm going to cut off these pieces. See, it looks like little ice or something on there. In the south, we call that sleet. It's like a mix of snowy rain. I'm going to cut that off, and then I'm looking for the pieces on my pick that have the most of those little icy pieces on them, because we're going to use those pieces. All right, now we're going to start at the top. There's no rhyme or reason to this pattern. I just know that since it's a teardrop shape, I want the biggest, widest part of this on the top. So you can see I just placed it down and twisted the branches around it gonna go up here down just a tad but beside it right across from it I'm trying to decide here okay so I'm gonna take that little stack place it down inside of there and then hold it tightly and twist the branches around just a little bit it's gonna hold it in place so this is gonna be the widest part of the swag that's gonna be the top it has the longest branches and it's going to have the widest deco mesh bundle parts. So now we're just going to start angling downward and go back and forth. Now we have five bundles with two gray and one white. So you're going to need to have ten gray pieces cut and you're going to need five white pieces cut to make each of those bundles. I like to do mine ahead of time so then the assembly is a lot quicker. So you see I went to the right and now I'm going down and to the left. Twist it around. Just like that. And I decided not to add any additional ribbon on this wreath. I well, on the swag, I didn't think that it was necessary for the look that I was going for. And I do know a lot of people just don't care about the bows. They just are not big bow people. So, you know, this may be just the thing for you. Plus, the snowflake is going to light up, y'all. Come on, does it get any better than that? Okay, so you can see here, I tried to get the widest part on the top there, and then it goes a little bit lower down. And you can accomplish that look just by moving around your pieces of deco mesh and your your branches just a little bit look here look who's making an appearance oh <gasps> the Grinch yes 
You're going to be seeing the Grinch and his progress throughout this video. My daughter was helping. She was doing her own thing in the basement, her and my son, while I was doing my crafting. They're little crafters too. Okay, so now I'm going to use about eight inches here of this jute cord so that I can put a hanger on the back. It's really tight between those two. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm pulling it down and then adding some glue right under it next to that metal piece. And then I'm just tying a little knot here so that we have a loop in the end so that it can be hung just like that. Okay, now here is a cork light set, but you can get any type of little really thin line lights like this at Dollar Tree or pretty much anywhere. Okay, here's the Grinch before he had his makeover. This is how he looked originally. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take the hanger out of my snowflake because I don't need it. I'm going to add some spackle in there. <gasps> the Grinch is back. All right, and then I'm just going to go around after my spackle is dry. I'm going to just go around and figure out how I want this wire to be attached. And you can see you can bend it. I wanted to make sure I had enough. So I just bend it around, use a little bit of tape to make sure that it was going to fit nicely on my snowflake. Then I'm going to add dots of glue and just use a little stick. It's like a coffee stir or something. I had a big pack from the thrift store. Um, and I like to use it for these types of projects, just to hold things in place and to keep me from burning my fingers. This is on my cool temperature on my glue gun. Now to attach the little light switch on the back, I'm going to use some of this double stick. I don't know what. This is tape. It came from Dollar Tree, but I lost the packaging, so I'm not sure what it's called. <gasps> Look at that. Oh my goodness, yes. Okay, so now we're going to move on to painting the rest of our snowflakes. These are the bigger ones and all of these snowflakes look different and I like that because no two snowflakes are alike. Did you know that? It's true. They're like fingerprints. They're different. So I'm going to take all the hangers off of the ones that were in that pack. I think you can get something similar to this at Walmart. Um, I'm pretty sure you can. But I'm going to use this white, and, then, and I'm kind of using a light hand here, and I'm doing sort of a dry brush technique. I don't want the wood to be completely covered up because my little inspiration piece, which is the big snowflake that goes in the middle, it has some distressing and some, some of the same look as what we're doing here on this snowflake. And I just really wanted everything to be cohesive and look similar. So I'll show you how that other snowflake looks. And you can see that they look better like that. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing with each of the snowflakes so that they can all be drying at the same time. This chalk paint is convenient. It dries super fast. There's the Grinch with his hat on. Oh, he needs a little bit of hot glue to fix him, but she's going to work on that. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, so now we need to put that snowflake on the tree. So I'm going to use a pipe cleaner. I'm just going to peel up the little section here because that tape is repositionable. You can move it around. It's sticky, kind of thick, like those little slappy hands that kids like to play with. That's what the texture reminds me of. I'm going to put some hot glue down on that full-size pipe cleaner, and then I'm going to press my light switch back on there. And just hold it for a minute so that my glue will dry underneath and everything will stay together and not fall off because I'm going to be manipulating the snowflake to get it in this wreath and I don't want anything falling apart. So I'm just going through, trying to find a spot that is empty between my deco mesh. I don't want to squish any of my bundles down and distort the shape of my little swag. So rather than wrapping it around the center, I'm just going to go and wrap it around the little branches. This is going to give me an opening to be able to put my hand in there to turn the switch on and off. Because that's the important part, right? We need to be able to turn it on and off. Alrighty. So here are our snowflakes, and they are all dry now. 
I'm going to take these picks and I just decided to cut them down shorter. Um, the bottom part of the pick for some reason didn't have much on it. I guess that's the way it is when it snows and sleets anyway, doesn't it? The top of the part is what gets the snow. But since we're doing this and we got snowflakes everywhere, I wanted to put lots of sparkly pieces around. So that's what I'm doing. I just cut them down smaller and I'm just going to be adding these throughout wherever they look good. I'm not worried about perfect symmetry here. Just want to get it where it feels right, where it looks right. How many of you actually craft that way? Do, do you go by how you feel or do you try to go by rules that other people give you? Because I'll tell you right now, if I went by all the rules that other people give me in crafting, I don't think I would have got as far as I have gotten. And I appreciate that uniqueness. It's God-given. And all of us have the ability to do something unique. And we should do that. Because that's the stuff that brings us the joy, you know. Brings us happiness. Gives us a smile when we see it in our home. When we come home and it's hanging on our door. It gives us that smile and that welcome home that we all appreciate and enjoy. All right, so I'm gonna start off with my biggest snowflakes and I'm gonna put those in there first. I'm just gonna place them here and there. I wanna be sure that they are touching something when I put the glue in there. You know, just poke it in there, expect it to stay. You need to have it pressed against uh, some type of framework underneath or another ornament or the picks, you know, so that nothing falls out. I don't want my projects that I work so long and hard on to just, you know, fall apart. I want them to last a while. So you're going to see me just taking the different ones and just placing them here and there. And you can actually give it a little dimension by gluing it right to the back of that star that's already there. You can see here. Just sandwich it between the deco mesh and the bottom of that snowflake. And honestly, if you don't have lights, which I feel like you can find them anywhere right now, especially during holiday time, but if you don't have lights, you don't even have to put them on your swag. This, to me, is gorgeous as it is. It's just really not necessary, but it honestly is the icing on the cake. It, it gives such a warm and pretty glow. And you see how nice it looks with a variety of sizes and shapes. I just love it. Okay, so here are the little pieces that look like um, all the leaves have fallen off. And, and this is what's left in the wintertime. These little sticks. And they have the same little ice on them, so they need to be added. This is going to give it a little more of a rustic look, which you know I'm all about that rustic life. And it's going to give it a little more size. It's going to make it a little wider. And I like that. Plus, it's like a flyaway, you know? Gives you a little more interest. And I think, honestly, it really brings the piece together, having these additional pieces in here. And they all came off the same pick. There were pine cones as well, but I didn't feel like the pine cones were appropriate for this it would have just overwhelmed it and taken away probably from the snowflakes and I didn't want that to happen they need their moment so you can see you're just tucking them here and there and they're very lightweight so they'll stick to that mesh and not pull anything down you can do this with the little pit berry vines that you get at Dollar Tree or any other type of greenery. You know, you could, instead of doing the little sticks, you could use other frosted greenery that you like. Um, the little frosted eucalyptus is really pretty and you can get that from Dollar Tree. You can use berries instead in these places, whatever you wanna use. But I really wanted to focus on, you know, the white and silver. I did a, a video uh, recently with a lot of gray and white and it, I just loved it. And when I thought about this snowflake and I knew I wanted to make a swag, I thought these would be beautiful together, really accent each other. So I'm just continuing to go around and you know, it's not important that they're the same size. 
nature generally doesn't do things like that, so I'm just kind of following that rule. Just put them here and there, just like God does it, you know? Here and there. Okay, so you remember the long piece at the tip of the tree? We're going to use it to hang the sign. And look when we turn the lights on. <gasps> oh my goodness, the magic. I love this. You could take more lights if you wanted to and go all the way through your swag. But this brings a lot of attention to that middle piece, and I like that. So here we are. And I've went ahead and done two different backdrops for you for this swag, just so you can see the difference. It mixes well with any other color scheme, pretty much, because it's white and silver and, you know. But also, I've put it on a different backdrop so that you could see that it looks really good with gray if you want to do some type of a neutral look. See, this is a more warm backdrop. It's more woody and natural colored. Look how pretty. Oh, I love this. And then here it is with the gray, so you can see how nice it looks with that as well. You can still see some of the wood tones in the snowflakes, which I think makes it a little more versatile as far as um, color schemes in your house and whether or not you want to do it. And you could use a different color sign on the bottom other than peace on earth and the gray and white like I did. You could use something different there. Or you don't have to do anything at all on the bottom if you don't want to. I hope you try this this beautiful little swag. I hope it brought you some joy watching it light up today. It sure did for me. If you have not subscribed already, I would love, love, love to have you in our little YouTube family. I'm going to take some of this ribbon that I got on clearance. Well, it's not ribbon. It's actually like a rope. And I think I got it from Walmart. And this is a ornament from Dollar Tree. Very pretty snowflake. Then we have this wallpaper, these little like panels of wallpaper that come from Dollar Tree and they're like a peel and stick, real easy to use. And this is a sign that I'm repurposing that I made for fall last year. It's just two pieces of um, the long signs glued together on the back with popsicle sticks. Okay, so now I'm just going to turn these in the way that I would like for them to be on the sign. And I'm going to line them up here and then just use my rotary blade and cut them off on the bottom. It did slide and my husband was talking to me. I got a little distracted and I cut too much. That's not going to be a problem because I have trim for this, so it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Now I'm just going to peel off that first little panel like the directions say on the back. I'm lining it up on the side. Just going to hold it down and then get ready to grab the next piece. And before I press it down, I'm going to grab my long wooden ruler and just press it flat as I pull the backing away. If you do it like this, you won't have the bubbles and things like that. It'll just lay completely down and there won't be a chance for any air to escape, get bubbly in there. I'm going to do... The same thing on this side, I'm going to peel the little strip off first, line it up, press my ruler down, peel that up, and then press it out as I am peeling it. I'm just going to lay it right over the top instead of cutting it off. I had a little excess where I got out of line here, so I'm just going to use this little blade and cut that off. Okay, and it looks good so far. You see where I've got that extra little gap up there on the top? It'll be covered though. All right, so since I did that, I've decided to add a piece of rope here and use my other, my little white trim also. I'm just going to use my glue gun and protecting my fingers. I'm going to go not on the edge, but rather close to the edge, just kind of allowing for the width of that rope and I'm going to press it down into the edge of the board. 
and I do cut that tape off later. By the way, I don't think I have that recorded, but there's some tape on the end of the rope. It just keeps it from fraying, but I do take that off once it's glued down, so it will look better. All right, and I'm going to go all the way to the corner. Now, I'm using a clip to hold that corner there, and it's rather difficult with a thicker rope to make a tight square corner but um, and so it kind of curves a little bit it doesn't bother me if it bothers you you might want to try like a thinner rope or a jute or something like that um, but there is a solution for that because you can kind of see the edge of the board underneath it behind the rope you see there before I clamped it but I'm gonna fix that don't worry same process here. I'm just going to start in the corner and I'm going to go around. And this time I'm just going to put the bead of glue right next to that rope and on the board. And that way we don't have any squishing out and making a mess. We're just going to continue around all the way on the inside. And this gives it a little bit, bit of an extra layered look. And I like it. I think that it the colors of the ropes together they kind of reflect what's going on in the snowflake so I think they look good together but you can tell me what you think okay so we're gonna go around and around and around just like that until we get back in the corner now when we get in the corner you're gonna take your scissors kind of cut it a slant and then put some glue inside of the pieces of rope that's still there and then you can just press it down and it won't come unraveled. Okay, so you see the corner here? I'm gonna take my little bull nose pliers, for those who are asking, that's what they're called, and just cut the corners off of each corner. All right, so with the snowflake, I couldn't decide if I wanted to keep that ribbon on there or not, and I just decided to take it off. It needs a little bit of help. There's a little bit of issue here. I'm just gonna put a piece of tape on the back. I'm gonna cover up the hole that's in the front. I'm just kind of scratching it down with my fingernail so it won't come off. I'm going to take some of this lightweight spackling and just go right down in that little hole to help cover it up. It's not completely camouf camouflage now, but it's better. And just using the back of my rubber spatula as a scraper, I just take the excess right off. If you don't put the tape on the back, it'll just squish right out the back. So I noticed that the believe word was not centered and it was kind of driving me nuts a little. So very, very carefully, I just popped it right off there. Look at that. Now I'm just kind of measuring to see where is going to be the center. So I can get my snowflake relatively in the center of this sign. I'm just using a pen. Um, that was the closest thing. I do find a pencil later, but pen is what I have. So now I have a little guide. And I can place this back down right in the correct spots. So that's what I'm going to do right here. Looking for my little guidelines and just popping it back down. Just pressing it and I'm just taking a little time to remove little extra spider webs and stuff off of it from the, the glue, you know, the glue webs. I'm just pressing it down really well. Now, since I want to try to make this a little bit straighter, I'm just taking my ruler and then a pencil, marking it. And under that B2, so that it goes right back where it needs to go. A little fancy glue work there. And then I'm going to flip it back over, line it up with those little marks I made, and then press it down as well. I like how they did this piece so you know thumbs up for Dollar Tree because that that little piece of the metal sign has like a little rusty tarnish on it and it looks really good I think they have these in a smaller too but I like the big one for this okay so I have these little ornaments which I also think came from the Dollar Tree but I'm not certain because I took took the packaging off of it and I was trying to think of how I would want these to go on my sign but I decided that I wanted them kind of centered on the size of believe so and they're puffy like the little pillows kind of stuffed so I'm trying to hold them down so that they will glue down straight instead of trying to roll off to the side kind of making sure that they're where they're supposed to be 
And then once the glue is dried, this is how it looks. And then I'm just going to use a simple hanger on the back. What do you think about this one? Alrighty, so now we're going to go to the gnome wreath. Here's a little gnome pick that came from Dollar Tree. I'm going to just pop him right off of there. It's pretty easy to do. Just be careful that you don't break them. They, sometimes they, they'll try to tear and break. This is a, I think this came from Dollar Tree. Yes, I believe it did. It's an 18 inch wreath form and it's got the little tinsel stuff on it. I'm going to use my rotary cutter, my rotary mat. I'm going to use a variety of ribbons and I do add a burlap ribbon to that too. And then I'm going to use a little bit of these rolls of deco mesh. Now these are just pieces that I had left and I'm going to be cutting these into strips. I'm going to use, I'm going to cut 14 pieces of the black and white and I'm going to cut seven pieces of the red. We're going to make, now I'm confusing myself, <laughs> we're going to make seven bundles, two of the check and one of the red. So they'll look like this and I'll show you how we do that. I use my little clips to hold them for me so I can get a lot done at once. I'm just going to roll these on the mat, just simple, 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 rolling it up. And then I'm going to put the clamp on it, put it to the side, going to get the red one that's going to go in the middle, roll it up next. And I'm trying to make sure that the ravelly pieces go downward. So that's what I'm looking at there to make sure that the edge is to the back. I don't want that rough edge in the front. So if they're all pointed down, then when I place them down on the wreath, those little raggedy edges will be hidden by the wreath. So one more time. Here we go. If you are interested in this type of crafting and you like what I do here on my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe. We are over 7,000 now and it is just the best community of like-minded crafters and sweet people. And um, the support is just amazing. I'd love to have you as part of our family. Now for the sad little wreath. It was kind of squished like an egg and I had to fix it. I had to just bend that flimsy wire and now I'm just kind of lifting up to see what I've, I've never used this type of wreath from Dollar Tree so I, I kind of wanted to see what we had going on. If you want to show me some love you can buy me a coffee. You can see the link in the description box below. So there are pieces on here that mm, it's just flimsy to be honest but it's perfect for, for this. It is perfect for like a mesh wreath for me I think because I didn't need a bunch of greenery and it's really sparse on here and there was a gap on one section but I fixed it with a zip tie. Okay so this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna take two little pieces of, ten, of the little garland I guess you could call it and they're side by side and we're just going to tuck that bundle down in it and wrap the little branches around it. I'm gonna do the same thing here I didn't have to count. I just went down about the same. You can see here what I've done. So that the ends are almost touching. They're kind of over, like end to end maybe, I guess you could say, once you get them placed down. I'm sorry, I can't be more specific with that, but I did not count these. Um, but you can see what I'm doing here. So that you don't have any big gaps between them. You want them to just touch. And then once you get all seven of those on there, this is how it looks and I think it looks pretty good as is, right? Pretty good. So now we're going to start with our ribbons. Um, the green and the red and the burlap that you will see are wired and this other one with the holly is not wired. Three of the ribbons I used came from Dollar Tree and the red one is one I got at the thrift store. But I'm going to cut these in eight inch pieces. Just like that. And then once you get your pieces, you can see here that the green bundle, I had three and I have four of the beige, like the burlap, beige burlap one. And then you're going to just go through and with each one of them, go ahead and dovetail all of your ends. This is just going to give it a prettier appearance. There you go. 
that's how you dovetail if you didn't know. And then I'm going to decide how I want to put my ribbons down and I know that I want that pretty pattern on top. So I'm just going to cross it over in an X and then put this one right down the center. I'm going to squeeze the sides and press them toward each other just like that. Just walking your fingers toward each other. I hold it with my thumb and my fingers of the other hand. Then you're going to go down to whichever bundle you want to start on. Untwist it, holding everything down. Press it in tightly and then twist your little branches right around it. I think a good part of this wreath, um, one of the better points for it, is that you're not going to have to cut anything off when you're done. There will be no more wires or anything that you have to remove or try to cover up wires because it's already in greenery, so it looks great. Okay, so the first one we put down was one with the green, and this is one with the beige. So we're going to alternate. There were seven, so we're going to do green, beige, green, beige, like that right on the top of each little bundle. And I'm just kind of playing around with it as I go and you're going to continue around with your pattern. When we get to the end, and there we are. And it's a good possibility I have two of the same one side by side. You know, it, it's a good possibility. As a matter of fact, now editing the video I can clearly see that that's what I did. But that's okay. I don't even mind. I don't mind. I'm not mad about it at all. All right, so you want to go through here and touch every single piece of that ribbon. Every bit of it. You want to make sure nothing is at a weird wonky angle. You want to make sure everything is uncurled, unfurled, puffed up, pressed out, whatever you want to call it. And it's a gorgeous wreath right now by itself, right? It looks really nice right how is it how it is, but we're going to add to it with our little gnome. I'm going to take my little sticker off the back. We don't want him to be looking like mini pearl in there. And then I'm going to use two pipe cleaners. These are long. I'm not going to cut them down. I'm going to use some hot glue. Press it down in there. Kind of roll it around a bit so it's covered up. And then just a piece of paper on top. And that'll hold it. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Press it in there. And then I'm going to take my piece of paper, press right down on there. Once the glue is dried, we're going to go ahead and apply him down. I'm going to use the, I'm just going to kind of go in between my bundle so that I'm not swishing anything that's pretty. And I'm going to go down to the wire base and wrap it around. Simple, simple. He's kind of centered just you know kind of wanted to get an idea of where he was at so that he's centered and not looking silly I don't want him off to the side and then you can see here I'm just working through and in between and then you can either cut that off if you want or just tuck it down in there and it'll be hidden it'll be fine and then you have kind of two options with the look um, right here I'm showing you how it looks if you overlap your little ribbon tails on top of him. He looks kind of sunken back or, you know, like he's kind of hidden in there. Or, like I'm doing now, I'm showing you that you can do it by poking the little tails behind him so that he really takes center stage and he's standing out in the front. So it's whichever you want, whichever way that you like it the best, you know. If you want the wreath to get more of the attention or the gnome, totally up to you. All right, so we're going to add some frosted greenery in. And I believe that's Dollar Tree. Really, really pretty greenery this year. And his beard is frosty, and his the little ball on his hat is frosty. So I thought a little frosted uh, greenery here would be pretty. And I'm just going to put these in here and there all over wherever it looks good. You can see me kind of moving it around a little bit. I'm trying to make sure that the end is actually sitting against something so it won't fall out. So I want to make sure that it is like tucked into something. So the glue has something to harden against and it has something to hold on to. That's what I'm doing here.
a little bit more. And I just decided I did not like this tree. So you know what? I'm going to take it off. I'm just using this little spatula here that I use on so many things. It's all dented and scratched. You can see my face in there. And I'm just carefully going through so that I don't tear too much paper. And I do have a little boo-boo, but that's okay. Again, we're going to fix that. If I got upset every time I made a mistake, I would never craft. And I'm just being honest with you. I wouldn't because I have lots of boo-boos. All right, I'm going to take some white chalk paint and this little brush, this little flat brush. And I'm just going to go around, kind of go around his little fingers here on his hands. I do this, uh, I did a little outline part, the little extra where you can see the green trim. I do that with a fine brush and then I give it two coats of paint and dry nice in between. And then this, I just give one thick coat of paint and put it in front of the fan so that it will dry. You can go back over this with some glitter if you want and it would probably just completely disappear. Um, but I wasn't worried about that because I knew I'd be covering it up. The bulk of it would be covered. So I have this little berry pick. And you can get something like this at Dollar Tree or really anywhere off of any greenery. And another one of these pieces of greenery that I've just kind of cut down to look a little bit more like the shape of a tree. And I want this to go right on top of it. So I want it to look like almost like he's holding a little greenery bundle of his own. So I'm just going to put this right on top of it and let that glue set up. Careful, careful with your fingers. And this is how it looks. And we're going to add a little bit on the bottom of rope so that it looks nice and finished. Just a dot of hot glue to hold that on there while we wrap it around, cut off the rest, and then a little glue in the end so that it won't fall apart on you. And that'll hold that little bundle together. And I think that looks so much better for our little woodland gnome. What do you think? So here are his little hands finished. I just left the white piece so it would help cover up the where I tore it before. So you still see a little bit of it, but it, I think it looks all right. Okay, and so we're going to add some glue on the back of that piece and place it down right in his little hands. Now he's got a beautiful piece of greenery. Our little lumberjack gnome. Do you like him? Are you going to do this? I hope so. Now you can just hang this up with a little piece of wire or something on the back. You could just hang it right off of the form. We're going to start off with some of these pipe cleaners. Use whatever color you like. I'm going to use some of this decorative mesh that came from Dollar Tree. It will take me four and a half rolls. And this is a 14 inch wreath form from Dollar Tree. You can see that it is broken down into sections, and that is going to be important in a moment. All right, we're going to start rolling this off and cutting it out in 12-inch pieces. We're going to make bundles of three, and we are going to need 18 bundles of three. So you're going to just roll it under here. The tighter you roll it, the smaller your curls are going to be. I like mine to be about the diameter of a nickel when you look at the end of it but do whatever it is that you like. And we're gonna just stack those together. One more, you can see what I'm doing here, and stack it. If you have a bunch of clamps or those little clothes pins, those work really well to hold your little pieces together. We're gonna to take a coordinating ribbon. This one came from Dollar Tree, and then I have two more that came from the thrift store. We're gonna have nine of each one of these. So nine of the plaid, nine of the one with the holly, and nine of the little, the thinner brown ribbon here, or beige ribbon. All of these are wired, and you do want to use wired ribbon for this. To give it a finished look, you want to fold those over and cut a little line up to make these. These are called dovetails. This gives a very nice look, just like that. We're going to take pipe cleaners, and I did switch to the red and white. You're going to need 18 of those. This is how we're going to attach our little bundles down to the wire wreath. I'm going to use a zip, I'm going to use a tie here. Put it around, twist it so that it stays on the wreath, just like this. 
We're going to use three in each section and you can see those dividers and you're just going to use three on each one. You can see they're about evenly spaced just like this. Okay, so now we're going to start placing down those bundles. You're going to grab that bundle, take your clamp off of it, and the side that has the little the edge that sometimes comes unraveled with the Dollar Tree mesh, place that downward against the wreath so that you won't notice and all of your pretty sides will be up. Just like this. Put your next one down, press it down into there, hold it tightly, and twist it. So there's two bundles. You can just push those little twists out of the way if you'd like. And then continue all the way around your wreath. Then you can fluff out a little bit, make sure everything is where it should be, and look how full that is. If you prefer, you can make it even more full by doing four bundles of four instead of three. All right, so we're gonna start with our little stacks of ribbon. They're all nicely dovetailed and ready to go. You're going to open one of your little pieces down here and you're going to twist this in just like this. One or two twists, you don't need a whole lot to hold it in place. And then you're just going to bend and fold these out. This is part of the fluffing process. It makes everything nice and neat. Don't worry about the wires not being the right color. Don't worry about the that sort of thing. We're going to take care of that shortly. I'm going to show you again. Take that stack, kind of pinch it together in the middle, fix the ribbons how you want them, and then we're going to skip. So we're going to go to the third one. So we had one, we skipped one, and now we're in the next one. So there are 18 bundles on your wreath, and you are going to use nine of the little ribbon stacks in the wreath every other pipe cleaner. Just like that. Here we go again. We're going to stack them together. Skip one and go to that one. Now we're going to go all the way around just like that. This is easy enough to do, right? And it makes such a pretty presentation. All of these little tails sticking out. So pretty. If you're enjoying this content, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you as part of my YouTube family. Okay, so we want to make everything look pretty. And now we have all these leftover pipe cleaners. So what are we going to do with those leftover pipe cleaners? If you're not going to add anything else to it and you're finished, you're going to take it to the back and twist it around and or cut it off. If you want to show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. Just look in the description box below. And thank you very much to Brenda Holmes for buying me my coffee. Okay. Press through your wreath form here and just twist it. And then you can just lay it down like that or cut it off. So when you're all done, this is what you're left with and you can't even see those anymore, right? Fluff everything out. Touch every little piece of that ribbon. Put it in the right place. Make sure none of your wreath form is showing underneath and that none of your hardware shows. You don't want any of your little ties showing underneath there. And you can fluff them up so that they won't be seen and it looks more high end that way. And this is how it looks so far. Really pretty and actually pretty enough on its own. You wouldn't have to add anything, but you could put a sign there if you wanted to, maybe in the middle. We're gonna add a big, pretty bow. I'm going to use this bow, make, bow making tool that I made for myself. I'll link that video for you. And you're just going to measure off long tails. And we're going to have varying tails on the different bows. This is going to be a stacked bow, really easy bow to make. Um, you're just going to keep repeating the same process over and over again with the bows getting a little bit smaller as you get toward the top. So we're going to take this ribbon, put it on the bottom. And make sure that we have a nice big loop to start with and pull our tails down and out of the way i'm going to fold it over push my two wires together and slide it down in there just like that 
that's just the way I do it. You don't have to put your wired pieces together. You can just shove the whole thing in there if you want, but this is how I do it. Makes more sense to me. We're gonna do a good long tail on this one too. So we're gonna place it down in there. I'm going to twist it so that I have the shiny side up. Pinch my wires together and slide it right through that slot. And I want this bow to be about a half an inch shorter than the bow that is underneath it. I'm gonna twist it just like that. Hold it down. The bow makers that you can buy already made have a little spool on the end, like a little extra knob down there that you can put your ribbon spool on, which makes it very convenient that you don't have your ribbon just running amok on your table. Um, I didn't add that onto mine and I kind of wish I would have, but you know, that's, that's for another video. Anyway, we're going to continue along stacking this bow. Each little layer with each little parts of the loops being a little smaller than the one that is underneath it. So it's just like steps. The bottom's going to be the longest and then a little bit shorter and a little bit shorter and a little bit shorter as we go up and stack up on our bow. Just like this. I was down to the end of this ribbon, so I had to pull on it a little bit and kind of adjust it so I had some even tails. Keep going here. That's my struggle to see which side is which. All right, so now we already have our zip tie underneath, so that makes it easy for us to wrap around it and zip it off. You can use floor wire for this. You can use another pipe cleaner if you want to use it. I should have put a piece of wire under there between the zip tie and the bow in the back so that we would have something to attach to the reef, but I do something else instead and you can choose which way you want to do it. So before I get it completely tight, I'm making sure that my little loops are even and then I can tighten up that zip tie. Finish off your ends with dovetails. This is gonna make them look very nice. Here is my piece that I'm going to use to hang it to the wreath, and I'm just going to use a piece of jute. Wrap it around the back and give it a couple of knots and cut off that extra piece there. We don't need that. Just like that. And then here's our wreath. We can go ahead and choose what we want the top to be. It all looks the same. And then we're gonna wrap it around back and tie it. If you're gonna give this to anybody, be sure that you really cover up your little uh, wires and things in the back. But this is just for me and it won't be on a glass door, so it won't be a problem. All right, and here I am just fluffing those loops up and out and you know, we want it to look nice. We don't want it to look like we just pulled it out of a box of our decorations from last year. I want to give you a couple of options now for what you can do with your bow. I've got these all pulled out here and they are kind of looped and hanging over the sides and they look really gorgeous. You could leave them just like this long if you would like or you could trim them up if you would like or you can curl them like I did. We're going to use a spool that our deco mesh came off of because I save everything and you can really tell if you look in my craft room. Watch my lighting video if you want to see what my craft room looks like because I show it without cleaning it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all my secrets are out now. Just going to curl it, wrap it around. Doesn't matter which direction you do. You see I switched it up last minute. Doesn't matter. Just as like we're curling someone's hair, you're going to make these little curly cues all over. Do some to the left, some to the right. Pull them down if they get squished. They have wire. You can just roll it back out. It's not permanent, but it'll last as long as you leave it alone. Mine is hanging up in my staging area and it's still gorgeous. No problem at all. I'm just gonna continue around like this. I want you to see all this so that you get the idea that everything needs to be touched. Everything needs to be manipulated. We really want this to look high end and you can see the difference when you're done with your projects. I don't want somebody to come in my house and say, look what you crafted. No, 
know. If they don't know that I'm on Crafter, I just want them to look at it and, and assume that I got it from a high-end store somewhere. Maybe a Kirkland's or, you know, something like that. Dare I say Pottery Barn? Hmm, I don't know. Would you consider this rustic? Because I do. I do because of the colors and because of the print of the holly on that ribbon. I think it looks woody or woodsy. So I think that it fits and I think the colors fit too for rustic. And it certainly will fit in my home. So look how pretty this is. Look at those curls. Love it. And the best thing is you don't have to use hairspray. How about that? Save that for the glitter. That is the biggest bow I have ever done in my life. Look at that. I'm just going around playing with the ribbon to make sure I have a variety. On if you enjoyed these, subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.